news. The Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has announced the scrapping of agricultural reform laws that have been the cause of a year of protest by hundreds of thousands of farmers. The measures allowed growers to sell produce beyond government regulated markets, but they hurt small farmers who took to the streets in large numbers. Hundreds of people are thought to have died in clashes with police. In an address to the nation a short while ago, Mr Modi said the government had been unable to convince some farmers of the benefits of the three laws. Today, while apologizing to the countrymen, I want to say with a sincere and pure heart that perhaps there may have been something lacking in our pious efforts, due to which we were not able to explain to some farmers the truth which was as evident as the light of the lamp. Well, you can imagine some of the reaction of this uh, incredibly unexpected U-turn. The BBC's Salman Ravi is in Delhi getting reaction from farmers at one of the protest sites in the capital. It's a big day for the farmers in India as the Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced this morning to repeal the three farm laws that were enacted by the Indian parliament. The farmers are protesting these laws, saying that these laws will pave way for the corporate sector uh, into agriculture. And that is why the protest, they continued. It was a long stalemate because uh, several rounds of dialogues between farmer organizations and the government, they practically failed uh, to reach to any conclusion. And today being uh, the birth anniversary of Sikh Guru, Guru Nanak Dev, the 552nd birth uh, anniversary. It's a big gift from the government, as the farmers say. How are you feeling? It's a great auspicious day for us. As a farmer, I'm really happy. And from this, from my all farmers, I will see the happiness on their faces. It's a really good day. Uh, it has been a long time since you've yeah, been from, Yeah, at least around about one year we are protesting for the, our rights. So today we are just uh, got enough hope that our demands has been going to be fulfilled. So now there's a hope for the farmers that their demands are going to be fulfilled now since the farm laws are being repealed. And uh, as you know, uh, they, they, they are, uh, in the political circles there are murmurs that uh, since there are elections in two important states and that is the reason that has compelled the government to actually bow down before the farmers. Salman Ravi, BBC News, Delhi. That's just some of the reaction from the streets of Delhi. Let's go live to Delhi now. Talk to our correspondent, Regini Vaidya. Now then, how out of the blue was this, Regini? This was a real surprise to anyone, I think. I mean, the farmers were planning to celebrate or mark, should I say, a year of their protests at the border with Delhi. They'd planned various events um, and they'd been there through so many seasons. They'd been there through the dark winter last year and of course that second wave of covid and the incredible heat and they were willing to keep going um, and so it was a surprise it came out of the blue um, now this is also quite surprising because it's not the sort of thing that prime minister Modi does that often he is uh, someone who sees himself as a strong man politician and very rarely makes political u-turns and that just gives you a sign of just how strong the farmer's voice ended up being when it came to this tussle between the two sides and we'll come to why this has happened and why now in a moment but what had the government's reasoning been in introducing these laws in the first place well, it all comes down, the government said, to economics. Now, they brought in three farm laws last year. The farmers said they didn't get consulted on those when they were brought through Parliament. But effectively, it was all about liberalising India's agriculture se sector, opening it up to market forces, allowing small farmers to sell directly to a supermarket or a big corporation. Now, the government said that was a good thing. It gave farmers more options and opportunity. But farmers were particularly concerned that they would lose the minimum pricing guarantee guarantees that they get for certain crops at the moment they sell through government regulated wholesale markets and so they're given a specific price for certain commodities and they were worried that once you open it up to market forces eventually those prices would come down and particularly those farmers with small land um, holdings they were worried that it would drive them out of business so in many ways you had an, econ um, an economic argument from the government and in other ways it was an emotional one from the farmers just as much as an economical one and you know Prime Minister Modi in that address to the nation said that he failed to convince the farmers of the benefits and uh, that is quite as I say a stunning U-turn from a leader who rarely backs down.
particularly because the standoff seemed to be so complete over this, there was no sign of a resolution. Uh, so, I mean, Rajini, why now? Did the BJP seem to lose its nerve with some pretty significant state elections coming up? Well, we've talked about emotion, we've talked about economics, now let's talk about politics. Um, as you say, there are some key elections coming up next year in the states of Uttar Pradesh and Punjab. Now, a lot of farmers in North India are from that area and therefore they are a big vote bank. And a lot of uh, uh, experts here are saying that if they looked at the political calculations, they had to do something to make sure that they could win those votes because the farmers really were, um, you know, turning against the BJP government and Prime Minister. Minister Modi. But I think what's interesting is what we're hearing some from farmers who are down at the protest site today is that even though the Prime Minister said you can all go home now, there are many farmers who say we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere until the laws are actually repealed. It's promised that they'll happen uh, next month. That'll happen next month. And others are also saying we're not going anywhere until you write into law a minimum price guarantee so that we know that we've got that locked in. So I think when you know you see those celebrations, my colleagues down at the border, um, you know, but on the on the other hand, I think some farmers say, well, we're in this for the long haul. They don't trust the government after what happened in the last 12 months. So let's see what happens next. But it doesn't look like they're all going to pack up and go home straight away. Rajini, thank you very much. Rajini Vaidyanathan there in Delhi.